Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, and training is at 11 a.m. today. How to deal with negative energy, how to deal with negativity for self and for others. Good morning, Matt. Welcome as well. We got everybody going. Christina, right on time. Good morning, Jakey Bakey. Thank you for your help on Clubhouse this morning. Rocking and rolling. Good morning, everybody. We have a great they planned 11 a.m. about three hours from now, Pacific time. We'll be doing our training on how to deal with negativity, self-negativity, uh, and, of course, uh, negativity from others. I see my friend Salim here. We will be with you in a few minutes. But first, we're going to answer a few questions. We're going to post up david at dmelzer.com in case you want my book, my guide, uh, in case you want the ebook, audio book. Oops. Hold on one second. I hope that worked. Uh, in case you want the ebook, audio book, you want me to sign my book, ship it to you, pay for shipping, david at dmelter.com. If you want the five daily practices, knowing your what, your who, your how, your now, and applying your why, just reach out to me, david at dmelter.com. Ebook, audio book. I'll sign my book, send it to you, ship it to you. The famous Justin Pugh is in the house. Rob Deerdeck is in the house. The Rob Deerdeck. I didn't believe it was true, but he is here. Good to see you again. Mikey, good to see you. All right, let's get this party rocking and rolling with questions. How do you deal with your fears? Well, first you got to identify what your fears are, the needs and triggers of those fears. And for me, the need to be right, offended, separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry, guilty, resentful, separate, and all these different fears that I have, I have to identify them. So I have to soul search because I can't find those fears outside of me. I'm not afraid of anything outside of me. I'm afraid what exists inside of me. I got to liberate my light so I can elevate and liberate other people's light to shine as well. I cannot just diminish myself in order to make other people feel good around me. I need to feel comfortable exposing and expanding on that light to help everyone. Uh, please reach out, uh, Kufan316. If you want my book, ebook, audio book, or you want me to sign it, send it, and ship it to you, I'll pay for everything. David at dmelzer.com. Also ask for the five daily practices. Know your what, your who, your how, your now, and your why. Uh, and uh, you can also join my text community, 949-298-2905. How to deal with procrastination. <laughs> well, that's where the five daily practices come in. If you are procrastinating, not getting things done, you got to take inventory of your what, what you want today personally, what you want today experientially, what you want today giving wise, what you want today receiving wise, who can help you and who can you help? How are we going to do it with the lens of productivity, accessibility, and gratitude, dealing with the activity you get paid for and don't get paid for, dealing with the activity you have planned and you don't have planned, dealing with the plan for sleep, then you can go ahead and prioritize. And see, the problem with procrastination is it's just a matter of priority. Everybody has things to do. Remember, 100% of the things you get done, get done. The difference between successful, passionate, purposeful, and profitable people is they get things done. So get things done by knowing your what, your who, and your how, and then delivering the now by valuing what's important first and then what's urgent. I use Eisenhower matrix in order to effectuate that. But if you get your priorities set by knowing your what, your who, and your how, you will get things done and you will not procrastinate. You'll be able to apply the why to the what, the who, the how, and the now. Apply the why. Uh, there we go. Uh, good to see you. Megan as well. We'll have you on in a few minutes. We got a couple more things to do as my peeps are joining. Tips for managing and dealing with insomnia. Yes. Uh, first of all, have an unwinding routine. Start your tomorrow today. Make sure that you're putting your body, your mind, and soul in the position to have the best recovery physically, as well as utilizing the subconscious and unconscious connection that we have. I unwind the night before. My tomorrow starts today so I can plateau and grow. No alcohol, no caffeine, no drugs, nothing like that. I burn out all the physical energy by making sure I have a minimum of an hour a day on exercise and always trying to spend minutes and moments in anxiety, fear, stress, etc. All righty, here we go. We are ready to rock and roll. Jakey the Baker. Salim is here from at drink.sound, drinksound.com, promoting, promoting, solving the gap in the, the sparkling beverage market, which is no pun intended, popping. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> how are you doing, Salim? Doing very well. Thank you so much for having me on, David. How are you doing today? You know what? Amazing. It's uh, I, 
I love every day, but particularly Fridays because we start with office hours at 5 a.m., clubhouse at 6, IG at 8, and then training. Uh, and today we're training on how to deal with negativity. Uh, you are in a crowded space. I'd love to see what you're doing to differentiate yourself in the sparkling beverage market with uh, uh, our uh, great drink sound. Yes, yes, very crowded space. And I think our biggest differentiator actually stems from our name, sound, which is sound as an adjective, sound body, sound mind, sound ingredients. And we really hang our hat on transparency. Um, what my co-founder Tommy and I found when we got into this space was it's just a very highly commoditized um, in the street of sparkling water space. So many uh, other players out there and really a race to the bottom in pricing and nobody looking at the ingredients. Um, so for us, we use only certified organic, certified non-GMO, single source extracts is our biggest differentiator. So no artificial flavors, but the other big thing is we don't use natural flavors, which I know sounds like a good thing, it doesn't mean a natural flavor is bad, but they're just ambiguous by definition. It allows a company to umbrella several sub-ingredients and not necessarily say what is in those sub-ingredients. So um, we really stay away from doing that and create a tea-based sparkling beverage for body, mind, and spirit. Uh, which is completely aligned with my belief system. What's inter interesting as an entrepreneur is, especially during the pandemic, uh, people were wondering what to do. You know, they had been laid off, furloughed, lost their jobs, quit their jobs. Uh, you know, 2020 was a year of rec election and uh, understanding, you know, what was going on. Uh, you epitomize to me what an entrepreneur should be. Uh, you don't put yourself into a box. You have certain skills. You have certain knowledge of who and what. And obviously there's some passion and desire. I call it, you apply your why. Uh, but you're a former nuclear power plant engineer uh, turned entrepreneur with the passion of, of health and wellness and understanding the biohacking that occurs in being a nuclear power engineer. How have you been able, number one, to apply those skills, knowledge and desire to a completely different industry? And what was the process and the mindset that you had in order to feel comfortable thinking that, you know, I'm sitting here as a nuclear power plant engineer and I have the capability of building, you know, a huge sparkling beverage uh, company? <laughs> Great question. So um, for us, for Tommy and myself, so both of us actually met at the power plant. We were colleagues at the time and had a passion for wellness and really uh, created the drink out of a necessity for ourselves. It was Tommy's idea. We both were very health conscious, really stayed away from sugar, uh, realizing, recognizing that really the biggest pandemic in this country outside of COVID last ketchup. year is diabetes. Yeah, ke ketchup. <laughs> yes, ketchup. ketchup and the sugar in ketchup, exactly, and <laughs> condiments and just everything and really the consumption of sugar, which the number one consumption of it in America is in beverages. People don't realize it. Um, so we sought out, uh, we'd be drinking unsweetened tea at work for the functionality, and Tommy came up with the idea to brew the tea. He bought a soda stream cooled it, put it in the soda stream, and voila, the first sparkling tea, and brought it in for me to try. I fell in love, and both of us had a passion for it, so started moonlighting a little on the side, and then really realized we had something very different than anything else on the market, and quit. And I'd say the biggest thing for both of us is, that's kept us going through the roller coaster of a journey that being an entrepreneur is, is just your mindset. And I think you talk about it so much. It's that positive attitude. And for us, we built the business the first five years, aggressively pursuing the corporate channel. And by that, I mean, we were in Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Microsoft headquarters and multiple headquarters and um, really stayed away from expanding retail regionally because it's just such an expensive place to play. You're competing against all the big fish, the Cokes and Pepsis. So COVID came and like you said, really hurt a lot of people. For us, flipped our business upside down. That was 70% of our revenue. And so instead of sitting there being negative, thinking, oh, why us? And, you know, just going just completely falling. We, we, we like, I like to say COVID forced us as a company inward, as I hope it forced the world and it first forced me personally inward as well. And for us, that meant a rebrand and, um, and just looking at efficiencies internally and coming out with a far better looking, better tasting product and really trying to see the positive perspective in everything. Because at the end of the day, the universe always gives you what you need. It's just a matter of how you look at it. And if you just say so tunnel vision, you miss the bigger picture. So uh, I truly believe mindset is everything, and I know uh, you do as well. Yeah, and it's so interesting. You know, I travel 
or pre pandemic traveled 200 days a year for since I was 24 and you know thought that I understood the traveling nutrition that was necessary keeping awareness to you know my own wellness as I was traveling uh, but it was funny because I didn't drink soda I drank uh, what was called I think cran apple back then they, they had this all natural cran apple juice and then all natural yep. right all natural then I would have trail mix you know, from the the Hudson Yard, you know, everybody knows those big packages there. Well, you know, somehow I ended up, you know, through the travel and, you know, there's some drinking and, and other foods involved, but I ended up like 47 pounds overweight, you know, as you gain 10 pounds a year, pound pound a month, you know, in about three and a half years, you're obese, uh, you know, even though I was working out and, you know, it creeps up on you. And then I started, like you, you know, looking at what I was putting in my body, my mind as well. Nutri nutrition to me is far more than just food and supplements and it's energy. And that's why I'm doing the training today on negative energy. Um, but I was amazed when you know what the, those two products, it, I, I might as well have been drinking Fanta and eating a Hershey bar. Yep. But I actually would have been better eating one Hershey bar than the entire bag of trail mix thinking I was being healthy. It, it, it's crazy. It's crazy the lack of education. So for us, sound isn't just a beverage platform. It's really a platform to educate consumers. And actually someone on our team, Lauren Kelly, who's Tommy's wife, is a registered dietitian. And we publish a blog to really educate consumers on nutrition, on ingredients, on what BPNI is, what citric acid is. Um, and, you know, just so that I, I think just the lack of education in nutrition and people don't realize that food is energy. And just because it says all natural does not mean it necessarily is good for you. Yeah. And it's hard to, you know, realize that things that are good tasting can be good for you. Uh, and obviously, the universe has put a lot of really good things that grow out of the ground. I just got back from Cabo and, you know, was eating farm to table. And it was amazing how much better I felt, especially every morning, is when I really felt the difference of, you know, true natural, right, organic. Uh, and it wasn't as if I wasn't eating meat or anything else. I just felt so much better without all the things that people, the hormones and the preservatives and the sugar uh, that we don't, the, the non-natural sugars, the high fructose, you know, corn-based, economically induced sugars that america has been you know just consuming for decades and decades under the guise of health and wellness and now we have with biohackers like you and tommy you know some great insight just real quick as we finish up uh, i may or may not be right about this but today's your birthday today is my birthday yes you are absolutely right and i could not think of a better way to start my day i actually started at 5 a.m here in california with a bikram class and now joining you for this. So thank you for the beautiful start to the birthday. Well, happy birthday. I just want to tell you that uh, you're doing so much good. I, you know, talking today about nutrients of, of the mind, body and soul and uh, drink.sound at drink.sound, drinksound.com. You guys really get it. What a great birthday present it is to all of us to have you and Tommy with such a great business that's helping people live a better life through i will add one little thing that no since you you and i share you know this philosophy you know i'd love to see you do a campaign i i drink water every day but i drink it i, I meditate and then drink you know try to get at least 30 or 40 ounces in me uh with some fiber in the morning uh but i put my intentions in the water and the purer the the beverage then you know i'm you know high i'm basically water most people don't realize so by putting my intention in the water drinking my intention along with drink sound we can al also have the first beverage that also creates intention within the context of the cellular structure so just a little idea for you on drink sound we can put the mind body and soul into there simply by having a campaign of hey put your most grateful thought into that sip uh, or a wish of yours into that sip uh, and so for uh, your birthday we're not going to blow out the candles we're all going to put our wishes for you into our drink sound and uh, that collective consciousness will create an amazing company for you and tommy thank you so much for joining me
David, thank you. And that's so beautiful you do that with your water. Water is alive. It is happy. I actually have a crazy process with my water. I drink too. I restructure it because water is, it is a lot. The happier the water, the happier you are because you're right. You are water. Thank you again for the time, David. Happy birthday, man. Take care. Come back and visit me, okay? Would love to. Cheers. Awesome. Cheers. Enjoy Drink Sound at drink.sound, drinksound.com. Salim Najjar. Happy birthday from all of us here on IG Live. What a great way to start your birthday and IG Live. Our day started together. Mine starts at 4 o'clock. I have 5 o'clock office hours, 6 o'clock breakfast of champions. And we have an 11 o'clock a.m. training on how to deal with negativity, personal and negativity from others and outside sources. Uh, pretty great stuff here. I know Megan is in here. We have uh, Megan here, co-owner and CEO of Light Years Ahead, lightyearsahead.com. Uh, taking a grassroots approach uh, to PR. And so let's uh, let Megan join us for a moment. Thank you, everyone. Follow at Blissful Gusty. I see you there, Blissful Gusty. Good morning, Megan. Morning. It's so nice to meet you. I'm oh, so excited to be here. Vice versa. Uh, and you just bright lit up the screen. I always, I'm Ooh. an energy person. So uh, it's amazing. I'm so blessed to have so many people in my life in person and virtually. I know energy, good energy, positive energy, when I see it and feel it and hear it, and you are a bright light. So I just want oh, to give you that. You. Um, give us a little bit, speaking of light, <laughs> your light years ahead in your yes. perspective of PR and helping other people to build their communities, because that's what I believe PR is, is building a community. So I thought maybe just take one minute to give us some background, and then I know you have a question for me. Yeah, so my company is called Light Years Ahead. It's a boutique public relations firm. We're national. Um, we work with a lot of entrepreneurs and brands that are trying to like get out there and build their name. And what we do is help promote them with the media to get third party editorial endorsements that are earned. So they're not paid like an ad. It's like us pitching your product or your service and getting it to the media so that they try it and then stalking them until they cover it. Just I call myself a certified stalker. <laughs> nice. I'm a philanthropist, so we are a perfect complement to one another. I've pimped yeah. out I've pimped out more celebrities, athletes, and entertainers, billionaires, millionaires, and entrepreneurs for charity uh, than anyone in, in the history of pimping. So uh, but you know luckily I do it for a good cause for philanthropy and giving back. Do you have a question for me? Yeah, and it's in relation to PR actually. I wanted to know have you ever personally experienced the power of PR and what it can do for you? Well, you know, I ran the most notable sports agency in the world. So I have dealt with PR for the last 30 years. I ran Samsung's first phone division and we obviously had huge PR efforts uh, as a public company um, as well. And then the last four years, uh, myself as building my own personal brand, uh, public relations is the key. In fact, when I work with Lee Steinberg, uh, who, this is the most notable sports agents in the world. They made the movie Jerry Maguire about it. The one yeah. thing, the most e extraordinary legal mind, right? Went to Berkeley undergrad, Berkeley Law School, top of his class. Actually debated Reagan at one time when he was in law school. Just an extraordinary scholar. But what most people don't know about Lee Steinberg is he's probably one of the best PR people that I've ever met. He yeah. understands ideas like being the first. He understood ideas about stalking and inviting and flattering and utilize. He would recruit the media as much as he would recruit the players. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he branded himself. Most people don't know, 26. He had the first pick in the draft, which was one of his uh, kids at Berkeley. He was in HR, one of the head residents when he was in law school, so he could afford to go to law school, even though I think it was like $600 a semester. Uh, but anyway, he convinced the Berkeley quarterback uh, that he would represent him. He was 26 years old, right out of law school. And when he signed uh, him and became the first draft, he spent more time PRing that, uh, calling himself super agent Lee Steinberg, the front page of the LA Times. He had hundreds of clients calling him to represent him because he got his name uh, front page of the LA Times as super agent Lee Steinberg. And then he branded himself through interviews and public relations and articles and coverage. He's been on the cover of Success Magazine and then he amplified. One of the things uh, 
beyond my experience with PR that has changed though, and which is something that I think you understand uh, by what I've seen you do is there's a stage now about PR. So it's yeah. not just, you know, I've been on, you know, Entrepreneur Magazine, Forbes, all these great places, but there's actually a limit to how many people are exposed or actually see that. Yeah. And the danger of that is you become a self promoter. Hey, did you see my article in Forbes? Or I, you know, I was a top uh, 10 speaker in Forbes and you put it on your signature line. I've actually, you know, utilized PR in a different direction. On my signature, I don't list out all the awards and, you know, books and TV, none of that. It just says res ipsa loquitur, which means that which speaks for itself. And the reason I can put that on there is because. I can go ahead and, and use content. You know, one of my favorite things I did that went viral was, you know, full spread in Entrepreneur Magazine, you know, sitting there, picture with Danica Patrick, and you know, it was a really great thing. Well, I went to uh, the airport and I had my guy filming me and a guy was holding Entrepreneur Magazine and he ha had opened it and I turned to the page and said, do you know this guy? And I pointed to myself, but we're filming it all. And he looks wow. down and he looks at me, he looks down and he goes, oh my God, you're that guy. <laughs> and he goes, oh my gosh, can I get your autograph? And I was like, yeah, sure. And, but it was really organic. And well, that video ended up expanding and amplifying an article that's in a print magazine in the airport to millions of people around the world that never would have seen the entrepreneur. Yeah. And I didn't have to tell people, hey, look at me. I'm in Entrepreneur Magazine. They're featuring me. I'm top entrepreneur of the year, whatever. I didn't have to do that. And that's one of the advantages of PR. PR is free marketing. Exactly. And a PR, a true PR person like yourself is an MVP, which is the most valuable profit center. Uh, and most people don't realize it. So that's yeah. been my experience. I wanna, you are light years ahead. You get the stage Woo! theory. You get the stalking theory. You get the spheres of influence theory. And you come back and visit me. I have people reaching you at lightyearsahead.com. Anywhere else people can reach out to you? Um, they can email me too at megan at lightyearsahead.com personally. So oh, Megan. One thank you. tip to you. Yes. Uh, well, you know this tip, but one no, tip to all your tip. viewers is just you never take no for an answer. If they say no, you try again, try again, try again. Eventually, a no is going to turn into a yes. I know you know that, but. <laughs> but you know, especially in PR, you know, the yeah. more more you're sending that message, people don't see things the first time. So you exactly. have, to, have to get those no's and pretty soon it becomes ingrained in their subconscious and they can't help but say yes. You right. are light years ahead, Megan. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful Thank weekend. you so much, David. Join me again. Okay. Take Bye. care. Bye bye. Awesome. Two awesome entrepreneurs. It's uh like a birthday uh today. This is amazing. Salim and Megan. They're positive forces of light. You can feel them on the screen. Uh, we're rocking and rolling. Time for a quick question, blissfully. Here we go. I think I'm gonna answer this, Din. Yep, uh, very good. Let me get to the next one. Join me today, 11 a.m., how to deal with negativity. 11 a.m., david at dmelter.com. If you want my ebook, audio book, or you want me to sign a book and send it to you, I'll pay for everything. David at dmelter.com. You can also get the five daily practices. Know your what, your how, your know your what, your who, your how, your now, and apply your why. I'll give you that as well. Not a problem. Just reach out, David at dmelter.com. What do you look for in a business partner? Align values, right? In a business for complementary skills, complementary knowledge, but align values, gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and inspiration. Those are the four aligned values that I look for most. If the values are not aligned, it's not gonna work sooner or later. Pretty soon, if someone's not gracious and forgiving and accountable, it ain't gonna work for me, and it's proven itself over and over again. In fact, my next book talks about those values and how to find people that have similar values and complement you with your skills, your knowledge, and your desire. Uh, it's extremely important. Uh, the name of the book, by the way, excuse my language, uh, but don't do business with dicks. Uh, one of my best titles that I've ever had. Let's get another question, rocking and rolling. If you want my book, ebook, audio book, you want me to sign a book, send it to you, ship it to you. All you gotta do is email me, david at dmelter.com. Get those five daily practices, david at dmelter.com. 
Let's go ahead and get Anthony on board here. We have uh, our friend to go live with. Anthony Mendez, at Mendez Fitness, fitness business coach, and host of Sweat It Out podcast. What's going on, Anthony? What's up, David? How's it going? Amazing. How's the podcast going? Oh, it's going great, man. I appreciate you for asking, and thank you for having me on here, man. Of course, you know, the fitness world is just uh, an unbelievable space right now, changing, growing. Uh, people are more and more putting their health first, uh, which, you know, even someone like me, I have to be reminded at all times that my non-negotiable is a minimum of an hour a day on my health, and fitness uh, is aligned with what and who I am, and I know you talk about it on the Sweat It Out podcast. Um, how have you been able to reconcile, though, the business of fitness with the philosophy, strategies, et cetera, because you are a great fitness business coach, which is not necessarily, you know, my trainer on Peloton, who I love, by the way. Uh, <laughs> most people uh, do. And anyway, how is a fitness business coach different than just a fitness coach? Yeah, so, you know, that's a great question, David. You know, and, and I'll tell you, you know, off the bat, you know, me starting off as a, as a personal trainer um, back in the day and then moving as, as an online fitness coach and then transitioning to the fitness business uh, uh, coaching, you know, it's first of all, it's been a great journey and it's been a great experience and it, it was very eye opening. And for me, um, you know, the, the reason why I got into it in the first place was because I wanted coaches not to experience what I was coaching, what I was experiencing anymore, you know, and the, and the most important thing was the things that stood out as a coach in personal training is burnout, not making money uh, while you're on vacation, and also not being able to make, mo make money while you're sick. And um, in order to make that money, you either had to front load once you come back from vacation, kill yourself, front load, make all that money up, or when you're sick, do the same exact thing. And then you're losing time with your family and doing the other things you love, you love to do. And moving into the business coaching realm, um, I was able to now convert what I was able to do online as a fitness coach and teach other fitness coaches how to be able to do what I was doing. So that way they can create more time to do what they love, to spend time with their family, pour into other um, endeavors that they have and be able to gain more time back and also make the money that they desire so that way they're, they can instill their passion, their true passion of coaching into others, being the best version of themselves. And that's something that I've wanted to regain in the, in the fitness community is I want coaches to be able to be passionate about training and instilling that love and passion into their clients so their clients get the best results. Because if you're burned out as a coach and if you ask many personal trainers out there, most of the times through that burnout, they lose the love for training. They, they, they take their training and it becomes work. And it's just now training time for money. It becomes a, a, a drag and it catches up to them. And then they, they fall out of it. So my goal was to really put out coaches who can gain more time, more freedom, make the money they deserve, that they want to make to feel good, feel comfortable so they can spend more time with their family and attack those endeavors that they want and then be able to pour impact into their clients' lives. Yeah, I mean, that's always the lawyer problem, right? Time for money. And that's why I've strayed away from even calling anything work. And I think it applies to the fitness world more than anywhere. When you talk about activity, you get paid for and activity you don't get paid for. One of the other things that you help people with as a fitness business coach is understanding how to scale yourself. And one of those ways is to work with brands. You've worked with Puma and on it. Uh, obviously, adhering and uh, absorbing uh, Aubrey Marcus's great philosophies of mind, body, and soul into everything that you do. Um, one of the areas that's different, though, from being a time for money person that feels as if they're working is that there is also a physical uh, strain as a fitness coach. And I think that's an interesting nuance because, you know, entrepreneurs usually have the opposite problem. They're not getting enough exercise or movement. Uh, and, you know, they, they have the mental stress, but a fitness business person has both the anxiety, the fears, the triggers, but they also have physical exhaustion uh, because it is time for money. And if they don't understand how to scale a business, the size, scope and scale of how to be and diplomatically give uh, th that duties and responsibilities to others 
uh, there's not only the mental burnout that every entrepreneur is challenged with, but there's a physical component as well. What are some of the things that you've learned and coach to deal with the reconciliation, uh, which is not normal for entrepreneurs, which is the overdoing the physical exhaustion as well? Yeah, no, for sure. And that's a great thing because the first thing, if you asked, I remember when I was in, when I was doing personal training back in the day, the, I remember we were in a we were in a workshop and it was a health and wellness workshop to make coaches better producers and increase their business and uh, be able to train better. And when they asked, we talked about the topic of sleep and they were talking about every, all the coaches were asked, what is the one area in your own life that you feel you're lacking the most? And most people raise their hands on sleep. Most personal trainers raise their hands on sleep and recovery. And it's because they're doing so many sessions. They're also training themselves. And then it's, there's no time for them to actually sit down and recover because then they get home, the little time they have left to spend with their family, they're trying to spend it. And then they have to go to sleep late and then wake up early to start training their clients again. So that was one of the biggest problems that you know, we saw in the personal training industry as coaches ourselves is lack of sleep because of trying to make good six figure income, you're spending the whole day at the gym practically, right? The good thing with online is that online can help sh uh, shorten that gap and give you more of that time. So that way you can get the recovery and the sleep you need. You can um, continue your daily uh, routine, spend time with your family, pour into yourself, your self-help and self-care and be able to create that circle of all success, which to me is important. You know, and that's what I tell my coaches all the time. You know, at the end of the day, it's going to go back to, you know, prioritizing your schedule. And then again, making sure you can use something like online to be able to um, take you out of that trading time for money uh, routine that you've been so accustomed to. And now you can be able to gain more of that freedom. So in your scheduling, I always tell them like, you know, ideally, how many, how many sessions online do you want to be doing? And then more or less, how much do you want to be making so we can figure out that core offer? that is going to time with the lifestyle you want to live. So if you want to be able to have this much time to enjoy with your family, do the things you love, then we know that you need to have this many clients charging this much and we can be able to create that for you. So that way there's a good, uh, you know, good balance. And I know I'm saying the word balance, which in reality, there's really no such thing as balance, but there's right. But it's finding internal balance, right? Internal balance where you feel you're in a good spot, even though knowing that one thing's always going to be a little bit more than the other. But by doing that, you know, that's where you can see the benefits of online um, and how you can, you know, pretty much help these coaches not feel burned out and also not feel that they can't recover, especially putting a lot of the physical work that they put into what they already do. Yeah, I don't talk about balance anymore. I used to talk about weighted balance. It's really more about alignment. And that's why those five daily practices of knowing personally what you want during the day, experientially what you want, giving wise and receiving wise what you want, and then aligning the who, the how, the now, and applying the why to that alignment of the weighted values that you've given the day and not being afraid to change your mind, grow and learn from it. And, you know, tomorrow's alignment may be completely different. Uh, but in the end, that alignment to me is indicative of true balance in life and happiness, allowing us to know what we are, happy, healthy, wealthy, and worthy, figuring out how to use people like you to clear the interference between us and what we already are. Uh, and last question, real, real quick, you know, you've said so many benefits of online uh, training. Are there any challenges uh, that online presents comparatively to doing things in person? So I would say challenges um, could be, I think that the technology, I think we're, we're in a good place in the sense of where we are currently from the way that, you know, I think COVID really like made us aware of like, okay, things are pushing forward to online. And I think it's also allowed us to see the weaknesses that we need to fix on to make the online experience better um, for, for both the coach and the client. So I think there's definitely a lot of things that can improve with the, uh, the actual tech, the tech part of it, you know, when it comes to like the streaming, um, the interactions, the softwares that you can use to make the client experience with the coach much better, more interactive. Um, and I think that's our obvious, those are things that are obviously gonna capitalize over time. You know, we probably weren't as ready um, technology wise when COVID hit, it just forced everybody to go into it, use all the tools that there are, which was great at the moment. But I think now people are realizing, okay, we need to enhance these tools 
to actually be able to create more impact online on these clients' lives because, you know, one thing that in-person does always have that online doesn't have is the actual tactile cues as a coach. So you can't physically touch somebody. And in training, that's also something very important. We can touch somebody. There's also other uh, uh, communication, certain communications you can do in person that you can't do in, in online. And I think that if we can get tapped closer to be able to making that experience online um, more informative, um, how do I say this, more interactive, I think that it's going to be able to enhance the quality of the session um, and get it closer to that in-person experience without having to be there. So I would say the in-person does have that touch of, you know, when you're in person, the connection and vibe is different. And then definitely you can use your hands on your client. Um, now, the great thing with online is what I've noticed and what I get feedback from many coaches is that when you're online, believe it or not, sometimes there's other tools that you can use that actually make your client more accountable. Because I feel that when you're in person, many times um, the client will come in, they do their session, they leave, right? But here's the problem. Going there for that session is not enough. What are you doing throughout your whole week and every day? as your lifestyle that's going to enhance and give you the true results because you can come work out for one for a session for an hour but how are you eating at home are you still being active right because just one hour of movement with your session is not going to necessarily get you to your goals right if you're sitting all day you're just sitting you're sitting in a static position you're not moving enough still so those little those little things that you can teach online and help people set triggers and hold them accountable and set tasks throughout the day, those little goals, those little things are sometimes the things that actually help the client the most um, besides just that one hour session. So I think the online does a good job of holding the person more accountable and giving them all these little tools that are gonna help them get through throughout their day and enhance their lifestyle overall versus just showing up to your training session in person. Yeah, and it also gives more time. You know, one of the things that I love about the online stuff that I'm doing is I started to realize how much time it took me to get to and wait for the uh, live sessions uh, that we were dealing with. So, uh, Anthony, you're an inspiration to all. You get the mind, body, soul, uh, conscious continuum, understanding both health, fitness, entrepreneurial mindset, and how it's applicable as a fitness business coach. And, of course, Sweat It Out podcast, getting to share those ideas uh, with everyone to help inspire them to reach their potential. Thanks so much for joining me. You can reach MendezFitness.com, at Mendez Fitness. Anthony Mendez, thank you so much. See you David, soon. David, I really appreciate it. Much love. Like I always like to say, if the world doesn't stop for you, why are you going to stop for the world? I love it, man. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Much love. Appreciate <laughs> much it. Much love. Take care, Anthony. Awesome. Three awesome guests today. Happy birthday to our friend, Salim, Megan, and Anthony, all in target with the holistic approach of life, the mind, body, and soul in three different areas, right? One in sparkling beverage, one in PR, and one in fitness, all with the same vibration, the same frequency. We must be attracting the right people. What do you think, people? Get those five daily practices, David, at dmelzer.com, david at dmelzer.com. Know your what, your who, your how, your now. Apply your why. If you want my book, just reach out. Ebook, audio book, I'll sign a book, send it to you and ship it to you. Not a problem. David at dmelzer.com. Text community, 949-298-2905. All that's pinned below. Remember, in two hours and 20 minutes at 11 a.m. Pacific time, training on how to deal with negativity personal negativity, external negativity, how to deal with negativity training is at 11 a.m. Pacific. We've been training for over 20 years, free trainings every Friday. Please join us. We have over 50,000 people registered. We have it on IG, on Clubhouse, and of course in the webinar format if you like that as well. You can bring your questions. I'll bring the answers. We'll do a little bit of uh, electron training, how to deal with the electrons internally and not externally, the negative energy. All right, everyone, let's take a quick question, and we will call it a, a day. Here we go. Best trip you've taken in the past few years to Africa. 
I'm the chairman of the Unstoppable Foundation and uh, got to go with my family to the Bagani, uh, to the Masamari and see Africa in Kenya again. Uh, everything from the safari with pictures, not guns, safari with pictures, not guns, uh, to the schools, to the camps, uh, to all the things that we're doing, water, financial literacy, healthcare, the community centers that my wife and I and my family have built over the last few years, uh, the college, all the things that we're doing over there, the best trip by far, non-comparison, and I got to fly a plane. That's right, bucket list. You know I got to fly a plane over the Monster Mario, over all the elephants and zebras and unbelievable giraffes. You know why? Because I asked. So make sure you're asking everybody. Make sure you're joining me for training. If you missed a training, all my trainings are featured on The Playbook, one of the top podcasts in the world, The Playbook. Download it, The Playbook, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, wherever you want it. It's everywhere, The Playbook. You can get all of my trainings on there. You can go ahead, if you missed any, check those out. But most importantly, everybody, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. I'll see you at 11 a.m. Pacific. Thanks. Bye-bye.